It's Sunday, August the 22nd. We're less than a week away from our next show. This is the King of the Mountain State Show. I'm Chase Hill. My guest today has really become a force to be reckoned with in the heavyweights of the amateur division in our state. Uh, he was victorious in round one. He's a former military guy that's getting a chance to now fight back in front of his hometown, Gary Rowland. Hey, Chase. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm excited for you. You looked really good in round one. We got a lot of boxing stuff to talk about before we get into that. Uh, tell me a little bit um, how old you are, where you're from. I know you recently moved there. You got a, a little girl at home. Tell me a little bit about Gary Rowland. Yeah, but I'm, I'm 33 years old, um, originally from Wayne, West Virginia. Uh, we just closed on a house here in Huntington, real close, not too far away. Um, and I, I got a seven-year-old little girl. She's my pride and joy. Um, you know, between my, my little girl, my wife, and my family, uh, we, I feel like we're just getting started, buddy. Well, you know, I, it's funny how on Facebook you can tell where somebody's interests really lie. And there's a lot of pictures of you and that little girl in there and your wife. I know the family's important thing to you. I'm sure they'll be out there supporting you this Saturday whenever we get there. Uh, before you were a boxer, you, you spent a, a active duty a lot of time there in the military. You were a Marine. Uh, tell me a little bit about that career that you had. Yeah, I was, uh, I was, did five years active duty. Um, I was a corpsman. I was a greenside corpsman. I uh, spent the majority of my time with uh, 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines. I uh, did two deployments to Afghanistan. Um, and, and really, it's probably the highlight of my life. I, it's some kind of experience that you'll, you'll never be able to take from me. And I, I carry it with me everywhere I go. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of my my Marine Corps buddies are going to be there. Uh, they're flying in and driving in, and uh, it was good. I, th I think you got to meet one of my my buddies last time, Mike Frazier. Uh, he's a, a true hero. Uh, stepped on an IED and uh, and lost both his legs, almost lost his arm as well, uh, double amputee. Uh, but man, you, he does jujitsu tournaments and just rock and rolls. Man, you, you, he's the most positive guy you ever meet. And like I said, he's a true American hero, and I'm glad he came out to watch me fight, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I was glad to get a chance to meet him. He's a great person, a, a real hero, and we appreciate all that you guys do. You know, we see the world nowadays. If this was a political uh, podcast, I could go on all day about everything going on over there. But we, uh, you know, we appreciate everything that you guys do, keeping it safe. Just things like this, getting a box, living in the free country like we do, the greatest place on earth, all because of our military. Um after the military, after active duty military, uh, how did you decide to get into boxing? How did that become a thing? Um, I, I've always trained. I've always been very active. So uh, you still got me, buddy? Yeah, I, I got you. Sorry, my daughter's calling me. That's all right. I got you. She knows how to FaceTime now. But uh, I, I started out uh, powerlifting, uh, bodybuilding. Um, you know, I started out actually eighth grade football. Uh, we got in the weight room for high school football. I've been in the weight room ever since. Um, always enjoyed training. Um, that segued into the military and, and staying physical for that. And then uh, I've always wanted to, uh, to uh, pursue college and get my, my degree. Um, so I started looking into uh, ways that I could go back in and, and serve uh, as an officer and maybe go in and uh, probably get a retirement out of it. So um, when I went back in, you know, started talking to recruiters, I was about 260, 265 pounds, and I uh, wasn't really built for military stamina, uh, endurance, or anything like that. So I really had to start training, and, and I picked up boxing as a way to kind of cut weight, and uh, I fell in love with it. Uh, it's, it's one of those things that it helps you stay sharp physically and mentally. So uh, – that kind of segued into uh, people talking me into doing a, a tough man contest. And uh, so blindly, I, I jumped in and signed up for tough man. Yeah, and that was quite the experience. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, what's it like when you put the gloves on for the first time and you're out there and you can hear your fans? It was in Huntington, so I'm sure you could hear a lot of the cheers and stuff for you. Uh, you've got good crowd support, all that. What's that like the first time you're under the lights and you're starting to go and in, in there and fight? Man, the, the adrenaline rush is like no other. And then the adrenaline dump will leave you dead tired afterwards. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of like skydiving, buddy. It's, it's, a, it's a gut check for sure. 
Yeah, it is. Um, now, currently, getting ready for this round two fight, even when you were prepping for round one, who have you been training with, the gyms and stuff that you're staying at? I know you do a little bit of, like, fitness training, a little bit of strength training, but also the boxing. Tell me a little bit about all the different directions that's getting you ready for this fight. Uh, man, I, I, the list is so long. Um, I train with uh, Bill Yates, Travis Henshaw. Those are my main guys. They, they've really been with me since day one. Um, I've trained a little bit with Corky Sawyers. He got me ready for that first tough man. Get really laid a solid foundation. Uh, I've heard you talk about him on your show before. Um, I've gotten to spar with uh, – travel around and spar with uh, Mike Shepard's guys. I've been to Parkersburg a few times, Clarksburg, uh, gym there in Clarksburg. Um, my, my big thing now is just try to mix it up with as many people as I can to get as much ring time as I can as much ring experience so that when it does come time to fight, uh, I've seen a little bit of everything and uh, I know what to expect um, and, and how to, how to handle myself. Now it was Yates, the Kentucky brawler that was in your corner for round one, right? Up yes, in sir. Bluefield. Okay. So um, is that, do we plan to see Yates there in the corner with you? You putting a team together for round two? Yeah. So y Yates is, uh, He's been, like I said, he's been there since day one. He's really kind of taken me under his wing. He's, he's helped me uh, tremendously in a lot of areas. Um, he'll be in my corner. Um, Dennis Johnson's another guy that comes in. He's, he's an older guy. I think he worked with a guy named Clark uh, back in the day. I forget his pro experience. But uh, um, Pearl Dotson brings in guys. And, and honestly, the, the whole uh, – everybody in the fight game in this area has just been kind of accepting me with open arms. They'll let me come in and mix it up with their guys. Um, you know, uh, whether it be Mike Shepard or, uh, the guys over at Westwood and Ashland or, uh, you know, here at Tri-State Fitness, I had some guys here this morning sparring. Um, I've been trying to spar every day, uh, at different speeds, light to full speed, you know, typically with Travis and Bill, I'll go, I'll go all out with those guys cause uh, they can, they can handle it. So. Yeah, and you really do have a good group of guys. I mean, the names that you're mentioning there, as you go from Parkersburg down the Ohio River there and in, into Huntington across the tri-state, I feel like that's the hotbed in our state for guys who are talented that work together, w whether you bring up the Hanshaws or, or Yates, Mike Shepard, all those guys, Pearl, everybody down through there, That that's a great area. You know, we don't see that down through the coal fields you know you get through the beckley the logans they don't have that big group of guys to work with like you guys do i think that's a real valuable asset absolutely uh, tell me a little bit about round one when you get to king of the mountain state obviously we had the lottery draft uh you drew gabe lambert i thought gabe was one of the favorites to win the whole thing i thought you were too um, when you guys matched up in round one it was easy for me to make the decision to make that the the main event um, for the amateurs that night, uh, Gabe was a three-time semi-pro champ, 6'4", big guy, also a great guy. Um, tell me a little bit about that when the draft happens and you see you got Gabe Lambert, how you start approaching that that fight, how that went. Yeah, I mean, me being new to the game, I, I did some homework and I started watching videos and, and looking at his record and stuff. I knew he was experienced and uh, probably probably had way more experience than I did, but at the same time, you know, I'll, I'll fight anybody anytime, anywhere. Um, so I, I had to go into it. My biggest thing going into that fight was I, I kind of want to prove that I've gotten away from uh, brawling and, and I've, I've, I've kind of learned a little bit about fighting and boxing. So um, I really wanted, you know, to do things that a lot of amateurs never do, work the body a little bit, drop the hands, uh, then go to the head. Um, you know, I, I've still got some things i got to work on that I think I'm getting better at that you'll see in round two. Uh, but at the same time, you know, planning for Gabe, um, it, it was one of those things is I knew I was going to have to drop his hands and, and get inside with him and, and kind of bang around on him a little bit. So that's what I really tried to do. Um, you know, he, he was upset after that fight. And I told him, man, I said, you know, that's just heavyweight boxing. You know, it, it's nothing personal. And, and he's a great guy and, and a great fighter. And you can't take anything away from his record. So big shout out to Gabe. Well, and that was a really great performance. And the reason I say that is um, a lot of my pros that I've had will go in with a game plan. They very, very seasoned fighters and, and we'll talk about this is what we're going to do. And then they get away from it. The, uh, it is a fight. It gets emotional. People get away from the game plan. Maybe it's being a Marine. Maybe it's the military aspect, but being disciplined, sticking to the plan, you know, as hurdles come at you. 
But when you went to the body on a guy like that and he did drop his hands, it opened him up. And then you went up top and ended up finishing him pretty early. That was textbook. You know, that was something that you had drew it up. You stuck to the plan, went in there and did it. That's the discipline that it takes in boxing. That's the difference in boxing and the brawling that we see, you know, some other places. So we could really see the, the change from your experience in the semi-pro down there in Huntington going into this fight, you know, really starting to get – turn into a boxer. Um, I know you've had even maybe, maybe about six more weeks to work on some stuff going into round two. This time yeah. you've got Luke Grizzle, a southpaw. Um, I don't know how much experience you have fighting a left-hander. He's got a good jab. He's tall. He's long. He really stays behind the jab, works off of that. His coach is Coach Joe Board, which is one of the best in the business. So Luke's going to be able to fight. He'll be there. He'll be game. Presents another challenge for you. Um, what do we expect in round two versus Grizzle? Round two, uh, I, I just want to come in sharper. Like I said, I, I probably put in more work for round two than I did in round one. Um, just kind of rolling in and, and taking the momentum and getting back to work. Um, I do know uh, I haven't seen a lot on him, but I do know he's got a he's got a straight jab. It's a quick jab and it's a long jab. Um, he, he's got a sharp one too. Uh, just from that first round, that's pretty much all I've seen. But you can tell a lot by the footwork, the hand speed, and how, how he uses his body. Um, I, I've mixed it up with, with a few southpaws. Uh, I've got a game plan for it. Um, you know, and it's just staying disciplined, honestly. Uh, right. trying, to, trying to stay out of that power zone, not working, working a different direction. Um, and then, you know, waiting for things to open up. So I've talked about how when we put this thing together, we had 16 heavyweights. A lot of times, even in the professional ranks, for some reason, the guys will find a way to get out of a fight. We were two weeks out, and I kept waiting on somebody to drop out. Nobody did. Everybody showed up. Everybody fought. I was really impressed with the group of guys we put together. Before the fights ever took place, a lot of people were reaching out to me beforehand and even after round one saying, hey, it looks like Gary Rowland is really impressive. Looks like he may be on a collision course with Derek Gibson in the championship. That's a guy that you fought in another championship in the semi-pro, your, your one other real competition. And you were winning a lot of that fight. But Derek ended up getting his hand raised. Uh, he got a punch in there, caught you a little bit. Uh, tell me a little bit about that potential matchup, maybe someday. I don't want you looking too far ahead, but it is there waiting. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I'm I'm focused on Grizzle right now, but it is uh, down the road. I know I can meet Gibson. Um, I kind of look forward to it, man. I got uh, I got some redemption. Uh, I, I got to uh, got to kind of something to prove with that. Um, I, I think with my experience level now versus then, um, it, it'll be a different fight. But I know he's been working hard. He's got a new trainer. Um, he's he's actually very very sharp, um, and he's got a big right hand. And I got to respect it now. You know, uh, before I never felt a right hand like that. I have now. I know what to expect. Um, so it, it, it's one of those things. I just got to stay disciplined and, and know that it's there. And uh, you know, I got a big right hand too. So that's <laughs> right. One, that's, that's heavyweight boxing, man. And any, any one shot can put you down. Any one shot can take you out of the fight. Uh, but, but you got to get, you got to respect it and not fear it. You still got to go in there and, and do what you're trying to do. Well, you showed up in great shape, um, fought well. We saw the, the improvements you'd made before the last fight. Really excited about this time. This time I feel like you're carrying that momentum. That's one of the things we wanted to do was to help guys stay in the gym, stay training, have motivation, have something there, the carrot dangling out in front so it's easier to train. So I'm excited to see what two camps in a row is going to produce. Um, I think it's a great matchup. We've got other great matchups that night. When it's all said and done, we'll, only, we'll be down to the final four guys. Um, it is this coming Saturday at the old Big Sandy Arena, now called Mountain Health Arena, there in Huntington, August the 28th, this Saturday night. It's a limited number of seats we're going to be putting in there. They're available online right now at kingofwv.ticketleap.com. Uh, we're going to be live stream pay-per-view at combatsportsnow.com. Um, I think the first person that bought a ticket for this show was one of your military buddies. So I saw that pop up and then the name there. Um, Tell me a little bit about this before we go. I'll give you a chance if you want to give a shout out to anybody. I know there's a lot of commitment and time goes into this and people, real support group that you've got there. I know on fight night, you have a lot of fans. So give, tell me uh, a little bit of the, the shout outs and thank yous. 
uh, you know, a couple of your sponsors, Amy Elkins, Tri-State Fitness, uh, Chris Miller, man, I, I've seen Chris Miller. He's getting prepping for a fight. He's helped me prep for this fight. I've helped him going into his fight. So um, just the, the camaraderie and teamwork there is great. Uh, Chris Miller, Dennis Johnson, Bill Yates, Travis Henshaw, Tom Henshaw, uh, you know, all, all the Westwood boys, you know, Mike Shepard and, 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 uh, and the fitness world guys, you know, uh, Jeremy Bates, um, you know, everybody that's contributed over the years, you know, uh, of this work and hard work and dedication, uh, man. And if I forgot anybody, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing personal. There's just so, so many it's guys a, that I've had to play working with. It's a lengthy list. And, uh, I will say this before we go, you know, I've met a lot of, get, a lot of guys in the fight game, um, fighters, trainers, coaches, people, fans, all that different stuff. And everybody that I've met that knows Gary Rowland thinks the world of you. So that goes a lot to say about your character and stuff that goes along with your fight ability. I look forward to seeing you. I guess we're just about six days away. You're a big reason why this thing's in Huntington. We're excited about it. And uh, we'll keep the fans posted as we get closer with some links on the Facebook page where they can buy tickets and, and where they can get the pay-per-view. But we're excited about it Saturday night. Gary, train hard, buddy. Keep yourself healthy. And we'll see you here in about six days. All right, brother. Thanks, Chase. All right. Thank you.